you know, I remember writing a paper with C.K. Prahlad in Harvard Business Review. It was called Innovation's Holy Grail, getting more from less for more, not just more profit for more people. Implicit in that is the idea of affordable excellence. Now, affordable excellence is a sort of a contradiction. In a sense, you say, how can it be affordable, but how can it be excellent at the same time, because one doesn't go with the other. I think that is exactly what we want to achieve, like what Dr. Devi Shetty has done, or what Arvind Aikare uh, does, uh, or there are several other innovations coming from India. India's rank in the innovation may not be high, uh, and we are still uh, sort of climbing the ladder. But one thing India has done is to change the dictionary of innovation. The words like frugal innovation, inclusive innovation, reverse innovation, affordable excellence, they have come simply because of what India has been able to do in, in, in a variety of uh, uh, sort of uh, factors. So from the vantage point of the National Institutes of Health, which is the world's largest public funder of biomedical research, um, it's interesting to look at the landscape of what is possible today. So NIH invests, as some of you may know, over $39 billion a year in medical research. And the idea is to generate fundamental knowledge about the nature and behavior of living systems. But more importantly, to translate these, to apply this knowledge to enhance human health. Um, and if we think about particularly promising areas, uh, one, once you look at the GII report, uh, you can read about some of these in greater detail. I think, of course, in the whole field of innovation, but particularly in the field of biomedical innovation, we've all, always had a tension between production and distribution. So the sort of incentives we need, uh, in particular intellectual property, uh, to ensure the production of innovation uh, are not always comfortable with the widespread distribution of the social benefit of the innovation. And that tension has always been there, always will be there in my view. It's a question of managing the tension rather than being able to eliminate it. Uh, but um, I would really like to draw attention to the changing nature of that tension with the digital transformation. Uh, so, uh, to caricature it, I think in the past this has been focused on molecules and in the future it will be focused more on uh, bytes, bits and bytes. In other words, the innovations that we see, and I think the GII report uh, that will be available to you shortly has some very interesting surveys of the developments in this field and the and the consequences of the disruption of traditional, and, and uh, you have just addressed this, uh, actually, the, the consequences of the disruption. Good afternoon, friends. I predict that within the next decade, India will become the first country in the world to dissociate healthcare from affluence. India will prove to the rest of the world that the wealth of the nation has nothing to do with the quality of healthcare its citizens will enjoy. But our desire is that any hospital on the planet should be able to have the most advanced EMR hospital management system at a price which they can afford. What is a price which they can afford? It should be available to every hospital at the price of one disposable plastic syringe per patient, per interaction, per day. And it is possible. It is possible when you think about the concept of converting atoms into bytes. If I have one kilo of rice, I give you half a kilo of rice. I lost my half a kilo of rice. I develop this EMR for my patients, for my hospital, with my money. And any one of you want it, I can technically give it to you free of cost without actually losing what I have. I am not a software company. I never raise money to build a software. This is what I have developed for myself, and this is what I can afford to give it to the whole world if they wish. And this is what will transform the way healthcare is delivered across the world, and this is what will help us to transform the healthcare of India, which I am optimistic will show the way to the rest of the world. Increasing chronic diseases, rising prices of drugs, high cost of delivering care, all has to be somewhat 
somehow solved on a country level or even in a global level. Of course, medical innovation or digital health is not a magic cure, but it's needed in order to allow the advancement. We need to have much more cooperation and collaboration across sectors, across industry, healthcare, and research. All are part of the ecosystem. Cross-sector collaboration and cross-industries diffusion are the two key factors that I think can make medical uh, innovation potential real. We see innovation in many fields. Look all around you with your smartphone. Look how finance changed in recent years. Patients expect the same. We are not entering a clinic and trying to go back 30 years ago. We want to expect the same um, service and the same uh, information and data as in other fields. 